Hello, Bible readers. It is Friday, December 25th. Merry Christmas, and we're reading from 2 Samuel chapters 13 through 15 and John chapter 1, 29 to chapter 2, verse 12. Yesterday, I ended by starting to talk about the book of signs and the first day of Jesus. Uh, one way to understand the structure of this very different gospel is to read it in kind of four parts. There's a prologue, that's chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. The very poetic, gets read in worship a lot in the beginning. There, uh, It kind of summarizes the whole thing. You could read the prologue and kind of get a sense for what John is trying to get across. Then there's the book of signs. So prologue, book of signs, that's chapter 1, verse 19, all the way through most of chapter 12. It includes the ministry of Jesus from Cana to when the gospel says, though he had done so many signs, they did not believe, blah, blah, blah. It kind of summarizes Jesus's ministry portion. And then it moves into what can be called the book of glory. So prologue, book of signs, book of glory, that's chapters 13 through 20. This includes what we'll call the last discourse. It's like a, a long speech from Jesus that is John the Gospel's way of conveying what Jesus wants to teach. So uh, this part includes the Book of Glory also not only is the last discourse, but then the passion of Jesus, his death and resurrection, and then a conclusion, a very clear conclusion. Uh, John's Gospel has some, some pieces that will feel a little more um, modern almost to us, that there is a prologue and a conclusion. Um, and then there's an epilogue. Chapter 21 is an epilogue. So it, it's a little, like I say, more familiar uh, in its form. Within the Book of Signs, so prologue, Book of Signs, before Book of Glory, within the Book of Signs are seven days uh, which echo creation. Our readings that we've read just for these first couple days that we've been in John have already moved through four of those days. Day one is the Baptist points away from himself to another. Day two, John the Baptist witnesses to Jesus in particular as Lamb of God and Son of God. So not only to be sacrificed, but also the Son of God to be sacrificed. Day three, some of John the Baptist's disciples go on to follow Jesus. Simon is also told on day three that he'll become Cephas, the rock. Day four is the final day of general preparation. Uh, Jesus calls a disciple, Philip, and reveals himself to Nathaniel and other disciples. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, we've done four days, and now we move into the first sign, the miracle at Cana. Uh, all the signs, there will be lots of signs coming up here in the book of signs. All the signs are meant to point to Jesus. They're not meant to show off. They're not meant to get into much of anything, but to point to Jesus as Lamb of God, Son of God. That's who he is. Um, and that is, they all point to Jesus so that we readers would believe and follow. Notice also that the mother of Jesus is the first to show the quality of true belief in this story at Cana. Luke would have loved that, right? Okay, 2 Samuel. Oh, so much is happening in, in both of these uh, books. So 2, Ch 2 Samuel chapter 13, Absalom and Amnon. Oh boy. Uh, for the narrator of the story, you know, the rape of Tamar, I just, I need to say, uh, this was important. For the narrator of the, of the story, telling 2 Samuel, uh, the rape of Tamar is not of interest as a personal tragedy for her, but as an offense to the family of Absalom, which leads to Absalom's vengeful killing of Amnon and his subsequent banishment by David. Tamar's rape sets in motion a course of events that eventually eliminates the two leading contenders for the throne. Tamar is an event rather than a person in this story. As awful as that sounds, that's how we need to see this. Because when the event is over, Tamar disappears, while Absalom and Amnon play out the effects of the event that are of greatest interest to the narrator. Um, the other thing to, to realize here is that the violence that David has unleashed on his own family, he took Bathsheba, and now his sons are following in his footsteps. Tamar is a victim not only of Amnon's lust, 
but also of David's sin and God's judgment. Um, the other gross thing is that David and Absalom, they see her tragedy as a complication in kingdom politics more than something awful that's happened to her. It's not great. Um, also, as we keep going on, um, oh, when they reconcile, when they reconcile temporarily, Absalom and David, it comes too late. And almost immediately, Absalom begins his plans for rebellion. I'll speak more about the rebellion next Tuesday. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.